Well, hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess and welcome to our second lab on wildlife applications in ArcGIS Pro. And in this exercise, we're going to take a look at minimum convex polygons, sometimes just referred to as MCPs, which are an excellent and intuitive way to draw a polygon that captures all the area used by an animal. It's a good estimate of an animal's home range, provides a way to examine the ways an animal may use different parts of the landscape for different purposes. And in this example, we're going to take a look at some radio telemetry locations taken on two Mexican spotted owls in Arizona back in the 1990s. We'll see how much land they tend to occupy year-round and how they use the land differently in the day and night. They are owls, after all, and, and how they behave different during the breeding and the non-breeding season. And on a technical level, this lab exercise will also demonstrate three ways that we can use the minimum bounding geometry tool. That's what we're going to use to generate minimum convex polygons. We can use it on all features in a feature class, which is the easiest way. And we can also use it on selected subsets, and we'll use this method when we're selecting breeding and non-breeding season locations. Finally, we can have the tool split up the features based on some attribute values and generate MCPs for all features that share each unique attribute value. And we're going to use this method to generate MCPs for all the features that are classified as day and night. Now for your homework, you're going to calculate the geodesic acreages of the MCPs that surround all the points for each owl, then the day and the night points, and then the breeding and the non-breeding season points. And you're going to repeat this process for both owls. As you do this, uh, be thinking about some questions. Uh, you know, why do you see differences between the day and the night use in habitat use by these Mexican spotted owls? And you'll, you'll see different sized polygons for the day versus night. And so why might that be? Uh, why might you see different sized polygons for breeding and non-breeding season? And finally, why might you see different sized polygons just between these two individual owls? Now, I'm not expecting you to know exact answers or to be experts on the ecological habits of Mexican spotted owls, but you know, just come up with some thoughts on it. Okay, so we start the project by making a new map. I've already got it here, and I've added the data sets that are listed in the, in the lab exercise document. These are the data sets you see. Uh, we've got L6 and L83. Those just happen to be the numbers of the radios that we had on the owls way back when. I recommend that you don't add any background data, no background base maps to this map because the locations you see here are artificial. Since Mexican spotted owls are a protected species, I had to actually shift all these points to a new location so they wouldn't reveal their true location in space. If you added a base map to this, it, it'd just show you these owls would be existing down near the equator in Colombia and, and, and they, they really don't range down that far. So uh, let's do this exercise without any background base maps. Just use the data that I provided. Now we're going to demonstrate these MCP methods using owl number six, and then it'll be up to you to do it on owl number 83. So let's, let's just zoom into owl number six. These are all the points we gathered over three years for owl number six. We're going to open the Minimum Bounding Geometry tool. It's in Analysis Tools. We can just type Minimum Bounding Geometry, or you can go to Data Management Tools, go down to Features, and then it's in that little toolbox right there. We're going to start by generating a minimum convex polygon on all points. We just grab this layer, drag it in, make sure there aren't any features selected, and there aren't. I just checked that selection button. Okay, we come up with a name for it. Now you can name it whatever you want. You're not going to be turning in the data. Uh, I recommend that you name it with a name that tells you what's in there. So I'm going to name it owl 6 all mcp to tell me it's, it's an mcp generated by using all the points. We have to change the geometry type. You know, you can get lots of different bounding geometries. If you put the mouse over this, it'll show you pictures of them. We're using the convex hull. Convex hull is that polygon that has no internal uh, pointing corners. And it was what, it'd, it'd be what you get if you had a bunch of pins stuck in a map and you struck a rubber band around it. So convex hull. The group option means how are we grouping the points to decide what to build the, the convex hull around. And we're just going to use all points. Just hit go, goes to work. Pretty quick calculation, and here it is. I'm going to change the symbology a little bit. So 
So this is the minimum convex hull around all points. Next step is to calculate the acreage of that polygon. So we're going to open up the attribute table for this new polygon feature class. Um, we're going to hit add field, make a new field called acres, make sure it's a double precision field. We would like our new field, so we're going to save it, close the field view, and now we have a new field. We're going to calculate the acreage in US Survey Acres. We just right click on it, go to Calculate Geometry, Acres. We want to do this in geodesic area because remember that is the most accurate and the area units are going to be in US Survey Acres. Coordinate system doesn't matter because remember when you use geodesic methods, whatever coordinate system it, it's in is going to take it back to the underlying geographic coordinate system and calculate it as it lays on the spheroid. All right, so we hit OK. Now I'm not actually going to show it to you just because I really want you to do the lab exercise yourself instead of just filling out the homework. So uh, this value is obscured, but this is where it would be. All right, so that's how we calculate the MCP using all points. Now let's try a new method where we're going to split up the, the data set based on some common attribute value. Now the points, if we, open an, if we open up the table, we'll see that there's an attribute field called period, which breaks up all the points into whether they were taken during the day or the night time. So we're going to make separate polygons for the day and night. And the tool lets us do both at one shot. So let's do that. Open up the minimum bounding geometry again. I'm going to take all six points. We're, again, we, we, we want, to, want to make sure that none of them are selected. So we would click clear the selection if we had to. I'm going to call this one owl six day and night MCPs. Make sure we got the convex hull. The group option lets us pick an attribute field. We had to hit list. Then we pick the attribute field we want it to split up the data on. So we'll just pick the attribute field called period and then hit go. All right, let's turn this one off. Let's uh, re-symbolize this so we have different symbols for each. It's going to be a unique values symbolization based on the attribute field period. We hit this little button to add all the values. We're going to change day into okay. Put night into a darker color. Okay, so now we see a minimum convex polygon around the night locations in blue and another one around the daytime locations in yellow. You might notice that the daytime locations tends to be nested mostly inside the nighttime, which is implying that it is roaming out a little bit further at night than it does in the day. Okay, then we go and Open the attribute field, calculate acreages, just like we did before. Okay, we have an acres field, we just calculate geometry. It's going to be geodesic area. The units are in US survey acres. Just hit OK. And we got values in here now. All right. We're most of the way through with uh, owl number six. Now, to get the breeding and non-breeding season, uh, if we open up the attribute table again, we might notice that there isn't a attribute field that says breeding versus non-breeding season. But what we do have is the month. Uh, if it's a 10, that means it's October. 11, it's November. But we, we know what months of the year owls breed, and so we just have to select those points that have the months during the breeding season. So this is going to be a select by attributes. First, we're going to select all the locations that occurred between March and August. Uh, month equals three and month equals eight. So it's a select by attributes where month is greater than or equal to three or March. 
month is less than or equal to 8 or August, and it has to be and. It has to be meet both of those criteria at the same time. This is what it looks like in SQL. A little easier to read, I think. Just hit apply. We have 144 locations selected. A little hard to see with this coloring, but uh, they are in cyan there. So now we open up the minimum convex polygon tool again. It's going to be owl 6 again. It's telling us that there's 144 points selected. That's good. Let's call this owl 6 breeding MCP. It's going to be a um, convex hull. And we're going to go with the option all again. This means it takes all the points, but since it, there's a selection, it'll just take those selected points and make a single polygon around those. Hit go. And there we have it, a smaller polygon inside the larger area. This is just those breeding season points. Got to calculate the acreage real quick. Accidentally close the table. All right, so here it is. We're going to do calculate geometry. It's going to be area geodesic. The area's unit is going to be survey acres. We just hit go. And then we get the value in here. All right. All right, so now we've got four of the five values. We've got the total area, we've got the day, the night area, and we've got the breeding season. So now we just have to get the non-breeding season. We could do that by doing this SQL query. Uh, notice that it's an OR instead of an AND this time. If we still happen to have our last selection going, though, and we had 144 points selected, actually all we can need to do is just uh, switch the selection. So now it's all the non-breeding season points. Pretty easy. Run back to the tool here. Owl 6. Gonna call this Owl 6 non-breeding. Convex hull. All again, because we want all the selected 130 points. Okay. Here's our non-breeding season, much bigger than the breeding season. Let's add our acres field. And then just calculate geometry. Okay, so now I've got five values calculated. I would just go back to this initial table at the beginning and fill in those values here. And then we just redo that process with uh, owl number 83. So should be simple enough. Let me know if you have any trouble. Good luck. Take care.